All right, kidney disease part two. Let's do it. Hello everyone, Dr. Rhett here, and today we'll be discussing polycystic kidney disease. Now this should be a fairly short video because it's a type of chronic kidney disease which we discussed in the last episode. The difference between polycystic kidney disease and your garden variety run-of-the-mill chronic kidney disease is that polycystic kidney disease is a congenital disorder, meaning that it's something that the patient is born with. In order to fully understand what this condition is, it's important to know just a little bit of kidney anatomy. The kidneys are made up of two basic parts. There's the renal cortex on the outside and the medulla on the inside. One of the kidney's basic functions is to filter the blood of toxins and metabolites and make urine. In order to do this, the kidney is made of thousands of little tiny filtration units called nephrons. The nephrons are also made of two basic parts. There's the glomeruli and the renal tubules. In polycystic kidney disease, the patient is born with abnormal dilated renal tubules. As they get older, these dilated tubules get larger and make cysts. And as the cysts grow, they start to compress the kidney tissue around them. Eventually, they can compress so much tissue that the kidney starts to lose function. And then the patient can eventually experience chronic kidney failure. Now, polycystic kidney disease can affect both dogs and cats, but a vast majority of those affected are cats of certain breeds breeds, particularly the Himalayan or the Persian breeds. So just basically think the smushed faced long haired cats. Now although this is something that the pet is born with, they usually don't show any clinical signs early on in life. In fact, if it is going to progress into clinical disease, we usually don't see clinical signs any earlier than three years of age, and sometimes they never develop clinical signs at all. On average though, a patient will usually start to develop clinical signs somewhere around seven years old. These clinical signs look like your basic generic kidney disease, which usually start off as excessive urination and drinking. And it follows the same line of progression as chronic kidney disease or chronic kidney failure. So if you missed that episode, I'll leave a link in the description below as I discussed all of the clinical signs and treatments in that video. Now even though clinical signs don't develop until a little bit later in life, and sometimes they never develop, we can still potentially diagnose the disease. And the best way to do this is by abdominal ultrasound. In fact, because it's something that the patient is born with, we can actually catch this condition very early in life. There's about a 75% chance of diagnosing this condition via abdominal ultrasound even before 16 weeks of age. And at about 36 weeks of age, our chances for diagnosing this disease go up to about 90%. Also, UC Davis offers a genetic test for this condition, and it's just as easy as taking a swab of the inside of your kitten's cheek and submitting it for that test. So if the pet is diagnosed with polycystic kidney disease, what do we do then? Most of the time, your veterinarian is most likely gonna suggest routine screening. And this is comprised of basically a good physical exam, blood work, and a urinalysis. The reason for this routine screening is that we're trying to evaluate for any early signs of chronic kidney disease or chronic kidney failure so that we can maximize quality of life for as long as possible. Early on in the disease, we usually recommend these routine screenings every three to six months. As the disease progresses, then we might recommend that screening every two to three months. And once the disease goes into the advanced stages, then we'll usually recommend routine screenings every month or so. You hear that? That's called puppy mayhem going on right now. I'm almost scared to walk in there and see what's going on at the end of this video. Now there are three basic things that I would really like you to take away from this video. And that's that number one, polycystic kidney disease is a genetic disease. And this is very important if you're a breeder because if you're breeding one of these predisposed breeds, then it's absolutely essential that if you wind up with any cats that have this condition to stop breeding them immediately because all you're gonna be doing is perpetuating this condition. Number two, if you wind up adopting or purchasing one of these predisposed breeds, when you take them to your veterinarian for their normal routine post-purchase or post-adoption exam, it's important that you discuss the chances that they may have this condition and ask them if they have the ability to perform abdominal ultrasound or if they can refer you to someone who can. Or you can ask them if they have the ability to submit testing to UC Davis for the genetic test. And number three, 
Just because they have the diagnosis of polycystic kidney disease, it's not necessarily the end of the world. But it is very important to do the routine screenings so that if it does wind up becoming a clinical disease, you can catch it as soon as possible so that you can maximize quality of life for as long as possible. So I hope you enjoyed this short video. As always, if you have any questions about this topic or any other topics that you may be curious about, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care.